Good morning class! In today's video, we will look at the trends in the periodic table of elements. The periodic table of elements seems like a mere enumeration or listing of elements. But you know what? There are actually beautiful patterns in the periodic table, and these help us understand the elements that make up our world and universe. So just a little bit of history here. In 1869, a person named Dmitri Mendeleev came up with a periodic table. He observed relationships among the elements known at the time, so what he did was he arranged them into a table which we now know as the periodic table. Now the more important question for students to answer is, what are these periodic trends in our table of elements? Let us look at question number one. Atomic radius generally a increases down a group and from right to left across a period, b increases up a group and from left to right across a period c increases down a group and from left to right across a period and d increases up a group and from right to left across a period the correct answer is letter a atomic radius generally increases down a group and increases from right to left of a period the first periodic trend is one pertaining to the atomic radius or the size of the atom. As we go down a column or group in our periodic table, the atomic size increases and the rationale is that we add shells. As we move from right to left within a row or period, we are moving within a shell and each element to the left has one less proton in the nucleus so there is a lesser electromagnetic attraction felt by our electrons and the radius thus increases. For the next question, the instruction is to arrange the elements in the order of increasing atomic radius. Aluminum, Potassium, Sodium, and Sulfur A. Aluminum, Potassium, Sodium, and Sulfur B. Sodium, Potassium, Sulfur, and Aluminum C. Sulfur, Aluminum, Sodium, and Potassium and D. Potassium, sodium, aluminum, and sulfur. The correct answer is letter C. Note again the trend for atomic radius. It increases as we move down and as we move from right to left. In other words, the closer the element is to francium, which is at the bottom left, then the bigger the atom is. A vertical column on the periodic table is called A. A period B. Group C. Row D. Valence Ang tamang sagot ay B. This is just a review to help us study the trends in the periodic table. In the periodic table, you call the columns as groups and you call the rows as periods. Question number 4. The elements in the periodic table are currently arranged in the order of increasing a. Atomic mass B. Atomic number C. Mass number D. Number of neutrons The correct answer is letter B. Atomic number again refers to the number of protons. Question number 5. Ionization energy is A. A measure of the energy required to add an electron to a specific atom. B. A measure of how much energy it takes to remove an electron from an atom. C. The energy required to shield the outer electrons from the nucleus. And D. A measure of the ability of an atom to attract electrons. Time's up! The correct answer is letter B. Aside from atomic radius, ionization energy is another trend that we will see in the periodic table. Ionization energy is a measure of how much energy is needed to remove an electron from an atom. As we go up a column, more energy is needed to remove the first electron. This means that as we go up a column, the ionization energy increases. Similarly, as we go from left to right within a period, it gets harder to remove an electron. So going across a period, left to right, the ionization energy increases. Why is this so? 
the electromagnetic force that attracts electrons to the protons decreases with distance. So the farther away an electron is from the nucleus, the easier it is to take out or remove. In other words, the trend for ionization energy is the opposite of the trend for the atomic wages. For instance, if we look at francium, the atom is large with only one valence electron and less ionization energy is needed. This means that it will be easy to ionize an atom of francium because the electron is far away from the nucleus. Alright? Next question. Which of the following statements is true? A. Potassium has greater ionization energy compared to calcium. B. Helium has greater ionization energy compared to lithium. C. Phosphorus has greater ionization energy compared to chlorine. And D. Sodium has lesser ionization energy compared to potassium. The correct answer is letter B. Remember the trend for ionization energy? It increases as we move from left to right. Which of the elements has the least ionization energy? A. Potassium B. Calcium C. Selenium and D. Bromine Potassium being the leftmost among the four would have the least ionization energy. It would give up its electrons more easily. Again, ionization energy increases left to right. Let us go to the next periodic trend. Which of the elements has the greatest electron affinity? A. Silver B. Chlorine C. Bromine D. Iodine The answer is Chlorine. The next property is electron affinity. If ionization energy is the energy needed to remove an electron, electron affinity is the opposite. It tells us how much an atom wants to gain an electron. Not taking into account the noble gases since their shells are already full, electron affinity generally increases as we move from left to right and generally increases as we go up. Thus, fluorine has the highest electron affinity. The rational being is that if it gains one electron, it will have a full shell like the stable noble gases. Meanwhile, lithium for instance would not want to gain electrons and in fact it would rather lose its electrons. Which of the elements has the least electron affinity? A. Boron B. Carbon C. Oxygen D. Fluorine Tamang sagot ay A. Boron It would have the least electron affinity. Remember again the trend for electron affinity? It increases as we move from left to right of a row or period. Question number 10 Electronegativity is defined as A. The ability of an atom to attract or accept electrons B. The ability of an atom to lose electrons or protons C. The energy needed to remove an electron from a specific atom and D. How easy it is to incur a nuclear charge Electronegativity pertains to the ability of an atom to hold electrons tightly. For this property, we again disregard the noble gases. And the pattern is that electronegativity increases left to right and it increases bottom to top. Remember that fluorine has the highest electronegativity. A smaller atom like fluorine with more protons for its energy level or higher effective nuclear charge will hold electrons best. Which of the following is ranked from the lowest to the highest electronegativity? Lithium, beryllium, boron, and carbon? B. Carbon, boron, beryllium, and lithium? C. Boron, beryllium, carbon, and lithium? D. Lithium, boron, beryllium, and carbon? The correct answer is A. Again, fluorine has the highest electronegativity. The closer the element is to fluorine, then the more electronegative the element is. In this case, carbon is the nearest, followed by boron, beryllium, and lithium. Thus, carbon is the most electronegative, 
and lithium is the least electronegative. Alright, so there, we just finished another session. We reviewed the basic stuff, and to summarize, the periodic trends that we have to remember are atomic radius, ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity. The atomic radius again increases top to bottom and right to left. Whereas for ionization energy, electron affinity, and electronegativity, they increase bottom to top and left to right. If you want to answer more challenging exercises, just let me know in the comment section below so I can send additional materials for you. If you like the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for updates. Good luck!